friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to do a book haul and you're probably thinking, Emily, weren't you not supposed to be buying books or anything in 2020? I made that decision before shit hit the fan. So I decided to break the book part of the no spend and support a couple of local bookshops. If you have the money, now more than ever is a great time to support your local bookshops. So I picked out two. One is called Epic Books and one is called Baca Phoenix. Uh, and I will leave a link to their online websites down below. They're located in the GTA because that is where I live. I'm gonna go through the books that I got and we're just gonna hang out with this gorgeous bun in my hair. Let's just get started. Okay, so the first book I got is Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nick. Nahi Vo? I could, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Basically, I heard Kayla from Books and Lala talk about this and how good it was, and then I looked it up on Goodreads and I was like, that sounds good, so I bought it. Uh, and it's in paperback too, which is nice, so it was a little bit cheaper. I don't know exactly what it's about, but I know it's, it says it's a feminist high fantasy and an indictment of monarchy. And Shana McGuire blurbed this, so like, sign me up. I'm down. The next book, again, is one that I don't know a lot about, but a lot of people have recommended it to me, and almost everyone I know that has read this has absolutely loved it. So I picked up uh, The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, and this was published by Tor, so I'm pretty sure it's fantasy. Um, I also heard there's a male male romance, uh, so that's nice. And, ooh, oh, it's also, like, kind of beautiful. You're sort of beautiful. But it's, like, it takes place on a magical island. I went to some of my friends and was, like, recommend me a book you think I would like. And my one friend, who was an old co-worker of mine, we tend to have the same reading preferences, and she recommended this. So I'm looking forward to reading that one on her recommendation, for sure. And then I also picked up, this is a new release, one that I didn't really know a lot about, but again, one of my old co-workers slash friend recommended it to me, but also I saw it popping up in a lot of places, so I'm pretty curious about it. And it's The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. You might recognize Grady Hendrix. His book, Horror Store, came out forever ago, it feels like now, but um, he's with Quirk Books, who published Miss Peregrine's, and Horror Store came out like around the time that Miss Peregrine's was super, super popular. And it was like a horror book, but it was an Ikea catalog, so it was pretty neat. And he wrote a vampire book, so I'm like, sure, let's do it. All right, so the next two books I got are the first and the third book in the fifth season trilogy. I've read the first book, I own the second book, so I also needed the third book. So I picked those up, and I'm so excited to finish reading these. Um, I think tomorrow I'm going to be filming my um, March, April wrap up. If it's not up already, it will be up soon. Um, but I'll talk about the fifth season that I read and I absolutely loved. I thought it was so brilliant and amazing and I can't wait to continue this series. So I needed the third book so that I could binge the whole thing. And then I also picked up a few poetry collections and they're actually, they happen to all be um, indigenous poets. So the first one I picked up is by Billy Ray Belcourt, um, who if you watched my um, Indigenous Lit recommendations, I talked about his first poetry collection called This Wound is a World, and it's very good. Uh, so this is his second collection. It's called NDN Coping Mechanism Notes from the Field. He definitely like plays around with style and format a lot, uh, which is something that I really like about his poetry. But then also he really tries to weave in the gay experience and his in his experience with indigeneity and also the intersection of the two. So I really love his poetry and I'm looking forward to that. I also picked up Holy Wild by Gwen Benway and Gwen Benaway is a trans indigenous woman and I actually wrote a seminar essay about her short story within, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's a 
um, indigenous queer sci-fi short story collection, but her story in it is called Transitions and I really liked it, obviously, because I wrote an essay about it. I realized that this came out and Epic Books is really good at stocking super diverse poetry, which I love. I decided to pick that one up too. And like, I just, I just really like poetry. I know we don't talk about, well, on mainstream booktube, we don't talk about poetry a lot, but if you're a booktuber who talks about a lot of poetry or if you know of any booktubers that talk about a lot of poetry, I would love to be able to find them. So leave names and such down below. I would love to check them out. And then the last book of poetry I got is by Thomas King, whom I love. One of my favorite books is Green Grass Running Water. It's amazing. It's so good. Um, it's definitely like weird if you're not used to a very heightened, elevated form of magical realism in the form of also like indigenous culture, but it's very, very good. So I picked up his poetry collection, 77 Fragments of a Familiar Ruin. I believe this is newer. I think it came out sometime this year and um, it kind of snuck last year. It must've come out like late last year. I remember my friend texting me and she was like, did you know Thomas King wrote a poetry book? And I was like, this is news to me. So ever since I've been meaning to read this and it actually came up on my library hold list like a week after I had ordered it and I decided to send it back so someone else could read it because I knew I was going to be getting it soon anyway. So I'm very excited about all that poetry and last but certainly not least, but this, there's a fly in here. Are you kidding? Is it outside or inside? God damn. Um, Oh no, it's outside, but we're good. <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna read this because it's so long and I heard mixed things about it. But you know what? We're in quarantine and I'm gonna read what I wanna read if I'm in the mood for it. And I feel like I'm about to be in the mood for this. So I picked up Sarah J. Mass, House of Earth and Blood, AKA Crescent City, um, numero uno. I don't really know what this is about. <laughs> I know that there's werewolves of some sort and there's Faye and the main character is like half Faye and I think her best friend gets murdered and she's trying to find the murder and this obviously this um other Faye guy helps her and it's like hers. I don't really know anything else other than that and I don't even know how accurate that is but this is like a chonker you know eventually you just give in and you buy the things that um maybe you were trying to get out of buying or reading so this is, this is what it is for me. That is all the books I got. It's not, I mean, it's not like a lot per se, but look, as a bookseller myself, I'm used to getting books on a discount. And so um, buying books full price, like, is a very different experience than constantly buying them at a discount. So those are all the books I got. Uh, if you have any questions about them or if you've read any of them and would like to tell me about your reading experience with them, I would love to hear from you in the comment section down below. I'll leave a couple of links down below of resources where you can check out your own indie bookstores and I'll leave obviously links for Epic Reads and Baca Phoenix down below. They're both fantastic bookstores and I love the people who work there and run them and I think they're doing a really great job right now. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to leave a like if you liked it and I will see you next time. Bye.